Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna to be teaching another lead code problem. Today it is actually problem number one. It's a very famous one called two sum. It is very well received. It had it has like fifteen thousand likes, and it's considered an easy problem. But it's also like uh, if to solve it, you need to demonstrate good understanding of data structures. So I thought it would be a good problem to teach you guys how to solve. So I'm gonna be showing two different methods. Uh, to, like two different approaches to doing this. Uh, one of them is worse than the other. And if you're trying to solve this on your own, I would recommend trying to do it first and then watching this video because most likely you'll try the first and the worst attempt first because it's what I did. And this will help you understand why that is not the best approach. So yeah, I recommend pausing the video and going there and trying to solve the problem. But in this case, let's read the, the problem description. So given an array of integers, return the indices of the two numbers such that they add up to a specific target. So you may also assume that each input will have exactly one solution and you may not use the same element twice. So we're going to be given an array of numbers and a num an integer, which is called the target. And what we need to find is the indices of the array in which the numbers in on that indices add up to the target. So for example, in this array, we have the target nine, and we need to find two numbers which add up to nine, we found two and seven, two plus seven equals nine. So we need to return the indices of these two numbers. So two is zero and seven is one, because zero, one, two, three. And we need to return an array that, re that it contains those indices. So the first approach is probably by intuition or uh, by brute force. It's basically just doing two for loops, uh, two nested for loops. And how you would do this is by first looping uh, through the, the array once. So int i equals zero, i is less than nums dot length and i plus plus and now whenever you reach an element, you want to check every element after that element to see if they if both of them add up to the target. So uh, let's create another for, for loop with a different variable. And actually, it's not going to be j equals zero, it's going to be i plus one, because now you want to check every element after the element you're currently on, because it wouldn't make sense, you already checked those element before the previous elements before. So in j equals i plus one, j is less than nums dot length, and j plus plus. Now you have, now you're checking every single element. So how do you uh, return the, the indices of the array in which both elements add up to the target? Well, you need to check if this condition is satisfied. So if num, nums i plus nums j equals to target, so if both elements add up to the target, then, oh, sorry, then let's just return a new array uh, int, uh, with the indices, so i and j. And also, since we're returning the value inside of a for loop, we also need to return like a base case. You can, uh, you can do it, you can return whatever, because most of the times, especially on this test case, they they uh, they makes us assume they make us assume that it will have one solution so i can just put in like nums or whatever any array and it will work so let's run it and uh whatever expected what happened oh okay i understood what, what happened uh i didn't put new this is so dumb okay return and it's going to be correct yeah accepted and we can submit and see uh, that it was a success. However, as you can see, the, the runtime isn't really good. It's 66 milliseconds. And again, it's not, it's, it's not like it's winning any competition against the other online submissions. And the reason is because this algorithm has a time complexity of O n squared. Why? Because it loops twice uh, it needs like on the worst case scenario, uh, it would have to ch it would have to check each element of the array twice, which doesn't seem like a big deal for right now because our array has like 
I don't know, four elements. Yeah, the test has four elements. But if we're trying to do this with a trillion elements, it would take a long time. So what is a better way to do this? Well, there's a way you can decrease this to linear, which again, it is what probably you're, you're looking to get whenever you're in a coding interview. Uh, we can reduce this to linear by using a data structure known as hash maps. And what hash maps do is basically they have a linear lookup time. So you can you can have two 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 loops in your in your algorithm, but in order to check if the if if the verb the elements add up to each other to, to the to the target, uh, you won't need to loop through all the elements first. You can just uh, call one of the built-in methods in the hash map class and it will be linear. So how do we create a hash map? We can just write hash map and give the the types. So it's going to be two integers and let's call it map, make it equal to new hash map. And basically what these two values mean is we, get, we can store key pairs of elements. So for example, here is a key and here's a value, we can give a name to the key and a value to the to that, that, that corresponds to that key. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to loop through every element in the array, so that we can, uh, we can fill in our hash map. So I plus plus and we're going to store uh, the index, the, the, the index of the array in the first in the key value of the hash map and the value of that index um, in the value part. Let me see map dot put and uh, I nums I actually no, let's put nums I first, because we're looking we're going to be looking for the index in the array based on a value and not the value in the in the in the map actually uh, based on the index so we're doing this like this it, it put the value first and the index after so after looping and filling out our hash maps our hash map we can uh, make another loop we can even give the same var variable because it's not nest nested so i is less than nums dot length i plus plus and now we can check just like the last the last algorithm, we can just check to see if two values in the the value you're currently checking plus a value in the hash map um, is can add up to the target. However, what is important to understand is that um, since we're going to be looking for a value in the hash map, we can't do like last time we, we just checked like if nums i oh nums i plus nums j equals target we can do we can't do this we actually need to get the value of j beforehand so what we're going to do is create a an integer here int and call it like difference equals to the target minus the nums i so now we're getting we're we're already we already have the value of j, but we need to look into the hash map to see if there's a, a, a value, a, a key that corresponds to that value. So if we look for a map that contains key and we put difference, um, then we can just return uh, again, a new int array with the values map dot map dot get key um, difference and just the i so we're going to be getting the, the 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 key for different for for whatever element uh, whatever value represents the difference and actually i think it's just get because we're looking for the value and not the the key and i because now both of them add up to the target and uh, we can also at the end like return nums because that's the base case and let's run it let's see mm, i forgot to put a semicolon 
and uh, let's see yeah it was accepted and uh, let's submit this and see the runtime wrong answer okay what did i do wrong well oh, oh, okay okay so <laughs> we need to remember that uh two values can't add up like by themselves to represent the target so if if this was 14 we couldn't uh, add 7 plus 7 so we need to also check um if the map dot get difference is not equal to the i so if it is not adding itself now let's run and uh, submit to see what happens and yeah okay so you can see that the runtime is like absurdly faster uh, it's two milliseconds and it's faster than 71 percent than java online submissions uh, this case, in this case, it, it is um, it is pretty good. I think it would be optimal if you were to to write this in a in a coding interview. But I hope you guys understand. I hope you guys understand why this is linear instead of O n squared. Just remember that whenever you're using using a hash map, uh, in, whenever you look up for values in the hash map, that's linear. So although you have two for loops in your algorithm it's still considered linear. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a lot from it. I'm gonna be making more videos on tutorials on how to solve legal problems. So stick around to see more and I hope you guys have a nice day. So see you guys later.